The following is a presentation of TFNN. The Trader's Edge with Steve Rhodes. Call now. Toll free at 1-877-927-6648 or internationally at 727-873-7618. The Trader's Edge. Now, Steve Rhodes. Good morning, folks. Welcome to the January 24th, the wonderful Wednesday edition of today's Trader's Edge show. I'm your host, Stevie Perseverance Rhodes, who absolutely knows that each of us should always be pioneers of our future versus prisoners of our past. Hope everyone out there is having a great day. Hey, let's make sure we have an extraordinary one. Now, the easiest way to do that is to always remember that life is happening for us, not to us. That's right. When you and I make that one little two-by-four shift, well, we can find the gift in every set of circumstance that life is going to toss at us. Now, today, you and I, we're going to go check on the circumstance of these markets. We'll go figure out what those bulls and bears, what those buyers and sellers are communicating to you and I at just past 11 o'clock in the morning. I want you to know I'm absolutely grateful for your presence here. But even more important than that, and that's this, during this next 53 minutes, I am here to serve you. So feel free to pick up that phone. I'd love to hear from you at 877 927 6648 now, if you've got a question but you can't call in, we've got you covered there, too. Go ahead and send me an email. Send that off to steve at tfnn.com. Do it early, please, and and uh, put radio show question, if you would, inside that subject heading. Of course, inside our Tiger's Dell, well, then any and every ping will do. So let's go ahead and get this show started on wonderful Wednesday. Of course, this is Tiger Financial News Network. I'm Steve Rhodes. Welcome to the show. A sea of green out there in the U.S. indices. Dow's up 102, S&P 29, NASDAQ 179, Russell. 8, semis up 91, trendy's up 56, gold's off 12 bucks, silver's up 37 cents, slightly crude is up a buck 78, natural gas up 17 pennies, 30 year treasury is flat, print out 119.26. Now, our leader in the clubhouse was Asimil Holdings, 66 bucks, 8.5%, Netflix up 62 bucks, 12.6%, Broadcom up nearly 3%, 32 bucks there, KLA Corp up 24 bucks, 4%, Lamb Research, 22 bucks, 2 and 7 tenths percent. If we take a look at the losers, you got Teledyne Technology off 12 bucks, Vertex Pharmaceutical 12 bucks, EPAM Systems about 11, Thermo Fisher down about 11, DuPont is down about 9, Intuitive Surgical off 5 buckaroonies. So let's do this here. Let's start with, I'm going to start with the king, king dollar right now, trading out at about 102.84. I do have a 10-minute delay, so I'm going to be off by a few pips here or there. But it's down 567 pips right now, and you've got gold trained out of 12 bucks. What's up with that? Well, let's go try to figure that out. I, I think I can share with you or show you exactly what's going on here. We did have gold that was trading up higher this morning. When it was trading up higher this morning, though, where's this chart? This one right here. Let's take a look at the euro, the yen, and the pound, because they represent 83.1% of the U.S. dollar index. If we just nail these three currency pairs, that means we don't need to really pay attention to the Canadian dollar, the Swiss corona, the Swedish, uh, Swiss franc, the uh, Swedish corona out there. We can just pay attention to these three. Now, as the dollar, as gold was rallying this morning, the euro was strengthening. U.S. dollar index was weakening. But we're looking at the daily. And I'm just going to expand it out, make it easier. We're looking at the daily time frame out here for the euro. So, but what that rally did was it ran right into that oscillator and change line and backed off. So if you're wondering why did gold back off on its rally out there, it's because in essence, what transpired from that point in time when price hit that oscillator and change line, it would have been after nine o'clock this morning, I believe. Well, no, I can't take that. Can't be certain about that. It would have to have been after 730 this morning because I don't think I look back at it. But regardless, it's just, uh, this is where the oscillator and change line so important, such a great tool out there, easy to understand, easy to identify. I teach that for you as a subscriber. Um, the exact techniques, you can calculate this for each of your uh, charts that you have for whatever time frames. Uh, but it's, so that's so price ran into resistance. That's the daily time frame. Just that's right into resistance and pulling back, meaning it is getting weaker. The dollar would be getting stronger 
Well, we also have on the weekly time frame price testing that key oscillator and change line. So it's sitting right now at weekly support out there. If that level fails and we do get a close below that area out there, that says the euro is going to get weaker. And then we'd like to see the euro resume upward and go ahead. And, I'm sorry, the week, the yes, the euro would be getting weaker. The dollar would be getting stronger out there. Um, the, a, the euro does have an A to B equals CD to the downside with a 1.0737 initial price projection level. In the case of the Japanese yen, the Japanese yen's been moving lower. But we can see that what price has done here, it ran into that TD9 count breakdown resistance level, right at the 148.83 area out there. It Price tried to bust through it a couple of different times. If you can't bust through the highs, you try to bust through the lows. Well, in this case here, it's really not bust through the lows. If you can't take out resistance, you try to take out support. And support is sitting at 146.43 out there. So that's an area for us to watch. We take a look at the Great British Pound, which was strengthening. It was running right up into that oscillator and change line. So it's backed off a bit. That's a key level of resistance. If we did see a close above that, the Great British Pound would want to strengthen further out there, U.S. dollar index would weaken. So we want to be paying attention to these currency pairs out there because they're going to assist you in understanding what's going on. How would I put all of this together? I think we're in a fair, fairly right right now. We're in a fairly kind of tight-ish trading range where uh, the euro is trying to figure out whether it wants to try to bust out the highs, bust out above that oscillator and change line or not. Uh, the uh, Great British Pound is doing the uh, same thing uh, as we speak out here. And if the uh, yen can take out that daily oscillator and change on 146.43 and then continue to move lower, well, then that's target would be 140.81. And if that's what it's going to do, the U.S. dollar index would weaken. This is all going to be applicable to how gold and the uh, gold miners are trading out there. So you want to be paying attention to this. It's, just, it's more than just looking at, quite frankly, I could go take a look at the U.S. dollar index, but I wouldn't get all of this information out of here. And that's really what we need in order to understand what the U.S. dollar index is actually doing out there. Whew. Okay, so Stevie, we'll go ahead and close that up. What's the next thing that we probably should do out here? Well, let's just, uh, what set of charts am I on? Uh, this is going to pull up the intraday NQ. That's not really where I wanted to go just yet. Let's take a look at the uh, daily and weekly. Oh, this is where I wanted to go. Yeah. So if we take a look at, if we take a look at the daily time frame, I'll do go through the daily and then weekly. Here's the daily ES mini. And as we speak right now, there is no topping pattern. There is a signal, a Rhodes momentum indicator signal out there, but that requires a bearish reversal candle in order to confirm its pattern. As far as counts, we're in bar number four, so there's no TD9 count out there. There is an A to B equals CD to the upside. That initial one-to-one -one price projection would get us up to 49.44. We're at 49.22. As we approach that 49.44 level, it'd be watching for a bearish reversal candle. Well, quite frankly, it'd be watching for a bearish reversal candle right now today. Now, this did have a Rhodes momentum indicator top. There was a bearish shooting star that formed a few days ago. If price closes above that high, which is 48.98.25 today, that pattern gets negated that would require a new bearish reversal candle to confirm that top on a weekly time frame it has a negated td9 count bottom it's trading above all kinds of resistance whether it's profile or the oscillator and change line it's in full out bullish mode out here in the nq no topping pattern yes there's a road momentum indicator signal but that again requires a bullish reversal candle to confirm that top on a weekly basis it has a td9 count that was negated last week that tells us about a strong move higher now in the nq its market is stretched even on the weekly time frame and if we did get a bearish reversal candle there that would set likely an intermediate term top meaning we'd see a retracement for at least a few weeks out there steve rhodes with tfnn We'll be right back. If you're looking for potential trading setups in the stock market, then Rocket Equities and Options Report is a newsletter you should try. Tommy O'Brien delivers options and equity trades when the markets present them using a combination of fundamentals and technicals. Sign up for Rocket Equities and Options Report today with a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. For all the details and to start your subscription today, visit the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors. 
You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the opening call newsletter at TFNN.com. The opening call newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the opening call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know, and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com, educating investors. Steve Rhodes started his trading career as a student almost 20 years ago, and the student has now become the master. Steve won the prestigious Timer of the Year Award in 2018 and barely missed that mark again in 2019, finishing at number two for the year. An amazing accomplishment. Steve Rhodes is committed to sharing his techniques and knowledge with anyone who wants to learn, and he shares his vast amount of trading knowledge every day in his Mastering Probability newsletter. Steve's award-winning newsletter, Mastering Probability, is delivered every trading day with updates throughout the afternoon. Sign up for Steve's market newsletter, Mastering Probability, and you'll receive access to seven of Steve's educational webinars absolutely free. At TFNN, all our newsletters come with a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have absolutely nothing to worry about. Visit TFNN.com and try Mastering Probability 30 days risk-free today. TFNN, education investors. TFNN has launched the Tiger's Den, hosted at Discord. TFNN has been educating traders for more than 20 years with live programming hosted by a variety of professional traders during market hours. The Tiger's Den, available to all tigers and tigresses for just $1 for the year. There's no catch or added costs when you join our community of traders. Sign up today and become a part of this educational community of traders. Just visit the front page of TFNN.com. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-873-7618. Welcome back, uh, folks. Let's get into some of the requests that came in. We're going to start with the first one. This came in uh, last e or yesterday afternoon. Yes, I'm sorry, yesterday morning. I just simply overlooked it. My apology, Alton. But it's ticker symbol BYDDY. BYDDY. This is a Chinese uh, equity, and that makes it very difficult for Stevie to give really good interpretation. What you can see all the gaps out here if you look at the daily time frame. So clearly, we, a gap here doesn't mean the same thing as a gap on some other stock. This is all currency conversion stuff. So you have to take that into consideration. What I can share with you here, um, Alton, and I know you're looking for a bottom. If we look at the weekly time frame, we can see the weekly time frame. It may form a bullish reversal candle today, uh, today uh, by Friday out there. And uh, that could give you your buy the D point pattern on a weekly time frame. There's already a hammer candle that formed out there. And uh, but price was just a little bit too far away from that uh, uh, price projection level. You've gotten to it uh, this week. Maybe wait to see how this plays out here. You could, again, on a weekly basis, if you got that by the D point, I'd be more inclined to say, okay, go ahead and take a stab at this, simply because the monthly chart is inside its bullish zone, its buy zone, because of its bullish structured profile out there. Uh, here on the daily time frame, yeah, I would have told you to have uh, bought this yesterday because that confirmed a Roach Mintum indicator bottom, simply because of that gap to the Upside. Again, I hesitate to do that. If you really want to trade BYDDY, my best advice is get access to the uh, Shanghai Exchange or whichever exchange this is on and uh, make sure you're taking a look at it in the uh, local currency out there and you'll get the better signals as to what BYDDY is doing in U.S. dollars. But, uh, you know, watch that weekly um, and then you'd put a stop somewhere underneath the low of the uh, week out there. So I hope that helps you out. Alton, thanks so much for taking the time 
to wait. You didn't really have a choice because I didn't uh, have uh, the ability to do another show. But let's go take our next request. This is coming from Hector and Patty. They want to take a look at Anglo Ashanti. AU is the uh, ticker symbol out here. Now, uh, like uh, the GDX, like uh, gold, this has uh, uh, sold off. But what this is doing, what is this doing? And so I'm going to start with the monthly chart out here. And on the monthly chart, all that I've got is prices holding support. That's the top of its profile, and that is at 17.15. So I'd say watch 17.15. What else do we have? On a weekly basis, prices testing a swing point out here, Hector. And, Patty, that's a swing point from the week of October 6th. That swing point had volume of 11.6 million shares out there. Um, let me see. What was the high? I don't know if it was tested last week, and it's being tested this week. 16.13. The low of last week was... No, it didn't test it. Uh, 15.95, it did. So 7.6 million shares, that was a test and rejection, was going against 11.6. Now, this week we're testing it again, and you're at 5.3. We're about halfway, so you're about 10, 11, 12 million shares or so. So it's testing that swing point with similar volume out here. On the weekly chart, price is also running to resistance. That is that red oscillator and change line. And above that, it has a sell zone. And Hector and Patty, that sell zone is between 1815 and 1888 out there. What's this thing doing on a daily time frame? Well, this has an A to B equals CD. The B point on this would be the day of November, or January the 11th. And the volume there was 1.2 million shares. That was passed with 3 million shares. So AU has a confirmed A to B equals CD to the downside. But it's really been trading in the sideways consolidation for the most part. Nonetheless, um, I'll do this on my other system because I'll give you the accurate number. I know that Hector and Patty want the uh, A to B equals CD price projection uh, level. Oh, you know what? I've got, I've got to take that off. So here's the interesting thing. Let me try to explain it by going back to my black background charts. It's just going to stick out better for us. And this is going to be about the A to B equals CD pattern. And the cool thing about it, cool thing about a number of patterns is you come back to the charts and you relook at them as new information is applied, as is, re, is received by us. So let me type in the A to B equals CD pattern that I had first mentioned, and then I'll show you the reason that it got negated. Well, that's weird. Where'd the tool go? Okay. Okay. Obviously, Stevie's got some gremlins, and that is really weird. The heck? Um. Sorry that you're having to experience this weirdness with, wow, you're talking really weird. My indicator light says it's on. I'll be a son of a gun. Okay, so let me just delete this thing and let me add back the A to B equals CD tool. My apology, wasn't planning on this, but everything was happening for us. Where is that tool? Here we go. Let's see if it applies. There we go. Okay. So now on the A to B equals CD tool, I'm just going to expand this out. We're going to take a look at it. I'll give you a Stevie lesson on the A to B equals CD pattern. So I'm going to start here because I'm going to use the conservative A to B equals CD. So for the A point, I'm going to use the high from December 27th. What the heck was that? Well, this is really weird, folks. So how do I turn that? This is really weird. Let's try this. Okay. There we go. So I'm going to try this again. So the B point, sorry, I wasn't expecting this, this type of technical problem. B point is going to be the trading set from January 11th, and that C point was that retracement, that one-day retracement, a point three eight two retracement, 38.87. B point was passed with volume. Again, we proved that. That was the volume from January 16th. Now I would say we've got A to B equals CD to the uh, downside of 14.88. We can't use that any longer. Why? Because we have a higher high that's transpired above that B point out there. So we can't do that. So I cannot say any longer that there is an A to B equals CD to the downside inside of Anglo Oshante. Maybe there's one that's starting as we speak right now. I can't say that, I can show that, but showing it doesn't mean diddly, but here's now what the new A to B equals CD would have to look like out there because again, we exceeded that high of January 12th. Once we exceed that high, we have a new high. Then we've got to go in the pattern to the next low, to the next lowest low area, which would have been from January uh, uh, January 22nd. Did I totally botch that for everybody out there? Is everybody just now completely confused about the A to B equals CD pattern? I hope not. Uh, I hope today was a great lesson either on confusion or 
how the A to B equals CD pattern works and when it gets negated. So what do we have actually inside of Anglo Ashanti? Well, I guess we get back to that large consolidation pattern that we were seeing out here. That's easier to draw when we take a look at the black background system. So let's get that rectangular box tool out here. Let's uh, put this pattern in. So it looks like that at the uh, top and it looks pretty much like this at the uh, bottom or so. So we're pretty much in a consolidation. You're in the center of the consolidation. That means you wouldn't add to it. You wouldn't sell here. Of course, you wouldn't really sell a $17 stock, or at least I hope you wouldn't. Too much upside that could just crush you uh, if something like that were to occur. So in Anglo Shante, what I've got is just simply a consolidation pattern as we speak right now. I'll flip back to those white background screens here real quickly. Just provide you with that last, those last pieces of information I believe you were looking for, Hector and Patty. And that was with regard to profile support so profile support for this is going to be up at uh, 1664 that's the top of its profile that's a profile that formed yesterday 1682 is its oscillator is oscillator and change line on the daily time frame there you go you should be seeing those charts as we speak right now so hector and patty i hope that helped you out if i screwed you up on the a to b equals cd pattern my apology i'll try to get my head together and uh, redo that for you if that uh, was just a total brain fart so to speak. We get back to this break. We're going to go take a look at Tesla, BRKL, the XLE, JDST, and RTX. Right now, you've got the Dow trading up a total of uh, 126 points. NASDAQ 100 up 183. Semis up 92. We'll be right back. report as a precious metal gold is still king it continues to hold the most effective safe haven and hedging properties across the global major trading hubs of the london otc market the u.s futures market and the shanghai gold exchange the gold report tom o'brien publishes his weekly gold report every monday morning for subscribers consisting of coverage of the xau hui gdx the dollar bonds the south african rand as well as 25 different mining equities with specific buy-sell recommendations. The Gold Report. New subscribers get a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. Subscribe to Tom O'Brien's Gold Report newsletter now at TFNN.com. Sharpening your skills as an investor is like getting better at playing a musical instrument. You have to practice, sure, but you also need excellent instruction from experts. At TFNN, you'll get advice and guidance from the authority in technical market analysis. And it's not just dry, tedious text either. TFNN airs live financial content streamed live on TFNN.com and TFNN's YouTube channel with Tiger TV. Live every market day from 8.30 a.m. to 4 p.m. Eastern for free. Each host is an experienced trader and gives their take on the market while taking calls and questions live from around the world. From the moment the market opens until the closing bell sounds, Tiger TV has eight different shows with expert hosts to help you make the right moves with your money. Watch online at TFNN.com or on TFNN's YouTube channel and become the investor you were born to be. TFNN, educating investors. TFNN has just launched their new trading room, The Tiger's Den. Hosted at Discord, TFNN has been educating traders for more than 20 years with live programming hosted by a variety of professional traders during market hours. And now they are expanding the reach with The Tiger's Den. Available to all tigers and tigresses for just $1 for the year. There's no catch or added costs when you join our community of traders. In The Tiger's Den, you can look over the shoulders of Tom O'Brien and the other TFNN hosts while they analyze charts during their live Tiger TV programs and join an interactive trading community with hundreds of members exchanging ideas. Interact with other Tigers and Tigresses as they share trading ideas, news analysis, and discuss the market action all trading day, even at night and on the weekends. The Tiger's Den at Discord is accessible on mobile or tablets as well, so it's always at your reach. To sign up today and become a part of this educational community of traders, just visit the front page of TFN. 
WSNN.com. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. Welcome back, folks. So we got Tesla coming out with earnings after the bell. This is for John C. inside the Tiger's Den out here. So, John, we don't have any kind of a bottom pattern on the daily time frame for Tesla. All that we have out here is a new profile. That new profile, give me a moment here. Let me check one more thing out. The new profile has supported 208.18. So that's certainly a level to be watching. Resistance at 219.62 uh, for Tesla. So that's your upper and your lower boundary line. Now, let's say that uh, this is after the earnings. Today is going to become bar number nine of a TD9 count as long as Tesla closes under the close of bar number five. So that's the first thing. And that close is 211.88. So if Tesla could close below 211.88 today, you'll get bar number nine. This is not a TD9 count bottom pattern. What could take place, let's say a Tesla disappoints out here, or whatever, for whatever reason, it sells lower. Not in the aftermarket, but tomorrow morning after 9.30. If we get a spike below the low so far, that's bar number seven. That was uh, January 22nd. That low is 206.27. That would then trigger a TD9 count bottom. So you need those two things. You need today's close to be under a certain level. And then, of course, tomorrow in uh, uh, regular trading, you've got to poke at least below that bar number seven. If you were to ask me, because we are trading below, uh, well, now we've got that new daily profile that is formed inside of Tesla. God, I have something weird going on on my... This stuff, something you can't see, but it is the craziest thing. Wow, weird, weird. Sorry, didn't mean to interrupt. Uh, uh, it didn't mean to interrupt myself out there, but I'm just trying to figure out what the heck is going on with the uh, system out here. Okay, so um, you've got that new profile uh, level out here inside of a uh, Tesla. So if there's a close below 208. 18 and I don't have any reason to think that there wouldn't be because we've got no bottom pattern and you're trading now below the weekly set of profiles worst case scenario you could see Tesla trade all the way down to 164.35 now that's the weekly TD knockout out breakout level I am not saying that's going to happen because really the next level of support for Tesla could or should be the low from November 3rd out there and that low out there is at the 194.07 area but the reason why that 164 area really comes into play out here is because if you look at that monthly chart the monthly chart shows that green oscillator and change line has acted as resistance. We're below the top of the uh, profile on the monthly basis, and that opens up the door for a move to 144 to 165 out there. So with regard to Tesla, how is it going to respond to earnings? All that I can share with you, if we look for tells out here, uh, that's in essence what we're doing right now. We don't have any kind of a good tell to suggest this is going to move to the upside. All that we know is where buyers and sellers are lined up. And right now, that's at 208.18. Those are the buyers and the sellers are at 219.62. So, John, I hope that helps out with regard to uh, Tesla. And if not, my apology for that. Piper Paul wants to take a look at BRKL. Brickle. Uh, I don't know what it actually is, but uh, reminds me of Brickle, Brickle down in Miami Beach. This is Brookline Bank Corp out here. So what do you know about Brookline? Well, one thing we know is that this thing formed a beautiful TD9 count bottom and it took price right back up into the breakdown resistance level. And it did that yesterday, and that was up at the area of $11.10. It's rejected that area and it's pulled back and it's tested support. It's testing support right now. Support right now is the top of its daily profile. That's at 1079 and it's oscillator and change line. It's basically at the same price level. So what you're watching for here, Piper, is that if price were to close below 1079, that would be a signal to you and I that price is getting ready to pull back even further, and that target zone would be between 1032 and 1045. If it stays above that area, then what we have here is that we don't have any kind of a top or anything. Uh, we just have uh, consolidation. Well, we, we, we're, we're trading above support and below resistance, so it's kind of a neutral-ish signal I, I i suppose on a weekly time frame chart you're sitting right at the center of its bearish structured profile so this is already moving into the sell zone so yesterday what took place 
Uh, Piper is uh, Burkle, B-R-K-L, ran right into daily TD non-count resistance while it was also running into the sell zone on the weekly time frame. And the sell zone is located between the prices of 1087 and 1150. That's because it's a bearish structured profile. Monthly chart looks pretty good with the exception of the fact that it's trading. I say I take that back. It doesn't look really that great. It's trading below profile support out there at 1210. Mm -hmm. So what's Stevie going to conclude out here? you got to watch 1079. If this closed below 1079, that tells it's headed lower. And 1032 to 1045 is your level out there. If price can close above 1110, then this should make a move to the 1150 to 1210 area. So, Piper, hope that helps you out. Dan wants to take a look at the energy sector. XLE. So let's pull that up on our screen. What do we see here? Well, we see a beautiful TD9 count bottom on the daily time frame, Dano, but you probably already knew that. And so now you've got price that is trading above the top of its daily profile. I believe that is the top. Let me make sure. 81.17, it most certainly is. So, Dano, a close above 81.17 today would generate a profile change in trend signal for us. That would then suggest that price should go to its next resistance point. On a daily basis for the energy sector, that's at $83.90. On a weekly basis, it's at $83.09 out there. How about that? So we had $83.90 and $83.09. Who's messing with Stevie's mind out there? And then we take a look at the monthly time frame chart. Not a whole lot out here other than price finding resistance in its sell zone. And that's between the 85.94 to 94.71 level. Daily time frame suggests that this rally should continue. What's the caveat? Is there always a caveat? No, but what's the caveat here? The caveat is we have been in a bearish market where prices have been moving lower. And what we can see out here. Uh, that the rallies have stopped after two or three consecutive moves higher out there. That has been pretty consistent. Turns out today is going to become day number four. Hmm, something to think about. Here's the way I take a look at this, Dano. If we get to bar number five, so bar number four is going to complete today unless this thing just totally falls apart of consecutive moves higher. So we're beyond where you typically see those counter trend rallies. That adds the idea that this could continue. We could get to bar number five. And typically when we get to bar number five, it's an indication, typically it's an indication that we should continue to move higher. The reason I say typically is because that was not the case back on October the 18th out there. So everything looks good, but that's typically a change in trend signal out there if you get beyond four bars out here. So watch today, watch tomorrow out there. But the XLE certainly giving us a signal that it wants to move up towards that 8390 level. Hope that helps you out, Dano. Uh, we got uh, Nitram wants to take a look at uh, JDST out here. So let's go ahead and pull that up on the screen. You're welcome. Uh, JDST. So the monthly chart, I don't know what the heck Stevie's got going on with that. that. So we're not going to worry about that. But with regard to JDST on the daily time frame, price is pulled back to test support. Not saying there's any kind of a top out here, although there might be, but let's just take a look at that. Let's take a look at the A to B leg, which we'll draw in here, and then I'll just simply move that over just to see if that met the requirement of completing an A to B equals CD pattern to the upside. The answer is no, it has not. So we don't have that because that would really take us up towards this TD9 count breakdown level at 743. All right, so we've established that. So we've got a pullback. What's that pullback doing? Testing support. Two levels of support, and that is the uh, center of its. Well, let me make sure. Maybe this has a new profile. 612. It does have a new profile. We get back to this break. Stevie will finish taking a look at JDST. Then we'll take a look at RTX and DOCU, DocuSign for Duncan Steve. Be right back. Currencies, commodities, and bond markets are as important as ever right now with how they're driving the volatility in equity markets across the globe, which is why it's a great time to try out Teddy Kegstat's Tiger Forex Report. Teddy Kegstat breaks down the Forex markets every Monday using his 30-plus years of experience as a trading veteran of futures, Forex, stocks, and options. Teddy releases his weekly Tiger Forex Report every Monday morning with coverage of all the major currency pairs, including the dollar index, the euro dollar, pound dollar, dollar Swiss, dollar yen as well as many more and he also has weekly coverage of the crude oil market and the 30-year t-bonds as they both influence forex markets tremendously 
When you sign up for the Tiger Forex Report, you also gain instant access to Teddy's 60-minute webinar archive he just hosted, Forex Strategies and Fundamentals, What is Behind the Tiger Forex Report. For all the details and to start your 30-day Tiger Forex Report subscription today, visit the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors. Everything in the universe is governed by the Fibonacci sequence. This mathematical principle is responsible for everything from the most aesthetically pleasing artwork to patterns in the stock market. To stay on top of stock patterns you can take advantage of, sign up for the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter at TFNN.com. When you subscribe, you'll get a weekly report from veteran day trader Larry Pesavento on stocks you need to pay attention to. And you can trust Larry's analysis. After all, he's got 45 years experience as a day trader. Larry will also provide daily charts, videos, and data on the key markets that he's tracking. Expect notifications from Larry on market movement you need to act on at any time. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. Subscribe to the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter today. TFNN.com, educating investors. Will the S&P 500 continue to climb? For bold trades on U.S. large cap stocks in either direction, trade SPXL, SPUU, or SPXS. Direction's daily S&P 500 bull and bear leveraged ETFs. Direction leveraged ETFs. An investor should carefully consider a fund's investment objective, risks, charges, and expenses before investing. A fund's prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about Direction shares. To obtain a fund's prospectus and summary prospectus, call 866-476-7523 or visit directioninvestments.com. A fund's prospectus and summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors such as traders and active investors. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. This program is brought to you by Vista Gold, traded on the NYSE American and TSX under the symbol VGZ. Welcome back. Uh, we're going to take a look at the junior miners out Junior miners out here at JDST. And so just like the GDX has a confirmed A to B equals CD to the downside, the JDST has a confirmed A to B equals CD to the upside. This is the bearish position out there. So that price target is about 743. Today's pullback has been a test of that green oscillator and change line. As long as it holds that, that's at 646. That's a positive. You do have resistance now at 704. That's the top of the daily profile that formed yesterday out there. So that's what I see when I take a look at JDST Nitram. Hope that helps you out. Alton right back, wrote back in, wants to take a look at RTX out here. He's been eyeing RTX, liked yesterday's price action out there. Yesterday's price action actually confirmed a roads momentum indicator top. Is So here's the problem with yesterday's candle. It was both a gap to the upside, that is bullish, and it was a bearish shooting star. Now, if I were to fill in the gap here, there's no way that that candle becomes a shooting star candle. So that says I lean less on that meaning out there um, uh, so it was a rising uh, a rising uh, window so your question was where are support and resistance levels support on the daily time frame Alton is at 8734 right now that is the green oscillator and change on that number is going to continue to change below that would be at 8499 uh, on the weekly time frame support is all the way down at about 8176 in the case of the monthly time frame price is running into a resistance level right now and that is its weekly oscillator and change line I don't find do you find it interesting that, that that's where price is sitting right now after yesterday's gap to the upside why did it stop where it did all those types of questions out there you'd have to say it's that monthly chart that is controlling that action the weekly chart looks like this wants to move higher there's an a to b equal cd to the upside it's a bull a bearish reversal candle the uh, daily time frame chart uh, negated a td9 count top yesterday that suggests a strong upward momentum move out here but where is this thing headed to you know, until it closes above this oscillator and change line on the uh, monthly time frame, that's up at 89.77 as we speak right now. If we were to get a close above that, then we could say that price here in RTX wants to go target 
uh, one. So, Alton, I believe you're looking to get into this position. I think what I would do if I were you, and I'd be looking at some short-term time frame charts, looking for some type of patterns. There's nothing in it right now. If I look at a 30-minute time frame chart, I'm sure there's nothing. If I look at the 65-minute time frame chart, there's not. So, what you want to do though is pay attention to these. Uh, look for some type of bottoming pattern on some type of retracement or pullback out there, and then you can go ahead and uh, fire away. So, I hope that helped you out with regard to RTX. The next request came in from Duncan Steve inside the Tiger's Den. That was a take a look at DocuSign. D-O-C-U is a ticker symbol out here. We take a look at DocuSign. It's trading above daily profile, trading below its green oscillator and change line. It's bullish. It simply losses momentum. Does not have any kind of a topping pattern that I can see that easily, whether it's the daily time frame that we're looking at or the weekly time frame or the monthly time frame. So everything here looks pretty bullish. Now, what price is doing on a weekly basis, it's dealing with a swing point. That's a swing point from December 15th. 63 million shares were traded back then. The last time it was tested was in January, a Sunday weekly basis, the first week of uh, January, or second week of January, and that was with much lighter volume, 28 million shares. So that's your struggle, is to try to get over that swing point out there. So resistance now is going to be that high, that high being 64.76. Resistance above that would be the TD9 count breakdown level. That's at 67.35. That's been tested, and that has held at this stage. So with regard to DocuSign, even on a daily time frame out there, the swing point had volume of, uh, this is on December 15th, 30 million shares, and that was uh, tested with uh, 12 million shares. So really, same kind of signals out here. Um, what's DocuSign want to do? It's a great question. Right now, you just got a bit of a sideways consolidation. This is the daily time frame. You can kind of see that little sideways consolidation out there. I don't have anything more to provide to you with regard to um, with regard to DocuSign. Uh, maybe one thing. Let's take a look at a 30-minute time frame chart. I can see if there's anything here. There was a TD9 count top. Price uh, found support at its uh, breakout uh, level eventually fail. I, I just don't have anything good here on DocuSign to be able to provide to you. Sometimes that happens out there, but it's not bearish. That's for sure. It's not bearish. It's more neutral in sideways consolidation out there. So I hope that helps you out. Uh, next request was to take a look at uh, soybeans out here, March soybeans. So uh, we should be able to do that right here. ZS0324. See if we get March soybeans daily, weekly, and monthly. And that is for Jeff Lynn, otherwise known inside the Tiger's Den as ELO out there, the Electric Light Orchestra. So the daily time frame for the March contract for soybeans ELO formed a wave seven bottom. Price right now is trading into its sell zone. The sell zone is between 1236.35 and 1251.50. If price can overcome that because that's a bearish structured profile, then price should go target 1316.75. Looks like you're gonna go ahead and confirm a weekly uh, TD9 count bottom on Friday out there. That suggests a move up to 1282. So 1282 to 1298 would be its price target. That's assuming price can close above the 12 5150 level. We don't have we don't have any knowledge of whether it will or it won't be able to. But you got a bottom on the daily. You got a bottom on the weekly. You're trading below profile support on the monthly. I think the daily and the weekly will go ahead and take over from here. This is going to be day number three of a rally inside of uh, soybeans out here. If we take a look at our consecutive days, higher and lower, you can see the last time we had a counter trend move was a three day rally. That was back on December the uh, 27th, and then price resumed its way lower out there. However, on the, uh, that was, what did I say? That was on uh, December 28th, actually, out there. I believe if we go take a look at December 28th, what we don't see out here is any kind of a bottom a signal or anything along those lines. In fact, at that stage, price was trading right into profile resistance out there. Nonetheless, you got a three-day rally. You couldn't see a pullback out there inside of uh, soybeans uh, beginning tomorrow. So I hope that helped you out, uh, ELO, and uh, thanks so much for the request. Not much time left here in this segment, but let's take a quick peek in. If I pop up these charts, what do we got? Where are we at out here? Daily, daily, weekly, and monthly for the Dow. So on the uh, Dow charts out here, and below that is the S&P 500. So on the Dow chart out here, we do we have we do have a topping pattern. And you know, it's I'm not going to this is this is too hard for each of you to see out there. I'm going to blow off that idea. Uh, and instead, what I will do is 
We'll just ignore the profile levels. I'm going to put the chart for the Dow. Oh, wait, I've got that chart for the Dow. Give me just one moment, please, Stevie. Um, I think it's this one. I think it is. Oh, it's not. Wrong guess. Good idea. Just wrong uh, set of charts out here. This is, oh, maybe not. These are three charts. Uh, this is this is okay. This is going to print up the Dow. So if you take a look at the left-hand side, you're going to see the Dow. Yesterday, what the Dow cash indice did, not the uh, Dow diamonds, not the uh, YM, generated a Rhodes momentum indicator top. And it did that because it was a bear sash candle out there. That only gets negated with a close above 38,109. In the case of the SMHs, remember they had that TD9 count top there. It looks like that's going to get negated today. It'll be negated with a close above 189.98. The XLK also had a TD9 count top. That'll be negated today with a close above 202.28. And all those things, that suggests that we head to higher ground out there. Steve Rhodes with TFNN. We'll be right back. You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the opening call newsletter at TFNN.com. The opening call newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the opening call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know, and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com, educating investors. Everything in the universe is governed by the Fibonacci sequence. This mathematical principle is responsible for everything from the most aesthetically pleasing artwork to patterns in the stock market. To stay on top of stock patterns you can take advantage of, sign up for the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter at TFNN.com. When you subscribe, you'll get a weekly report from veteran day trader Larry Pesavento on stocks you need to pay attention to. And you can trust Larry's analysis. After all, he's got 45 years experience as a day trader. Larry will also provide daily charts, videos, and data on the key markets that he's tracking. Expect notifications from Larry on market movement you need to act on at any time. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. Subscribe to the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter today. TFNN.com, educating investors. TFNN has just launched their new trading room, The Tiger's Den. Hosted at Discord, TFNN has been educating traders for more than 20 years with live programming hosted by a variety of professional traders during market hours. And now they are expanding their reach with The Tiger's Den. Available to all tigers and tigresses for just $1 for the year. There's no catch or added costs when you join our community of traders. In The Tiger's Den, you can look over the shoulders of Tom O'Brien and the other TFNN hosts while they analyze charts during their live Tiger TV programs and join an interactive trading community with hundreds of members exchanging ideas. Interact with other Tigers and Tigresses as they share trading ideas, news analysis, and discuss the market action all trading day, even at night and on the weekends. The Tiger's Den at Discord is accessible on mobile or tablets as well, so it's always at your reach. To sign up today and become a part of this educational community of traders, just visit the front page of TFN. .com. Welcome back, uh, folks. Let's uh, go out to uh, Martinez, California and speak with Brent. Hey, Brent, thanks for calling. Good morning to you. How are you today? Good morning, Steve. I'm doing well. How are you? Excellent. Thanks so much. we got about two minutes to go. I know you called with kind of a general question. Uh, fire away. 
Yeah, and this is something I'm expecting to do right now, but just over time, if you could do it, because it's not great urgency, is to go oh. over the yearly charts of, I'm pretty confident that in the Dow, NASDAQ, S&P, they made higher end-of-year closes than they did in the end of your close of 2022 and uh, maybe the Russell too, but if you could look at those over time and just, you know, give your thoughts on what that might mean. No time like the present. So let's pull up those yearly charts for the indices out here. We've got them handy. They just have to populate. Now, because it's a yearly chart out here, I've got about a full 60 seconds, maybe a little bit more than that. So I don't know how long these are going to take to populate. If it takes a little bit longer to populate, Brent, what I'll do is I'll make sure that we take a look at this tomorrow. But right now, what I can share with you is, you know, we're trading a new all-time high. So we're trading above the 2023 high out there. And that's a bullish signal. Whenever you trade above the high of the prior year, no matter what the instrument is, it's just simply a bullish signal out there. Uh, so we are most certainly uh, trading above that in the semis, in the S&P, uh, in the uh, Dow, not the Russell 2000, not every indice. The transports are not doing that out here. Yeah, it's taken a, a little bit of time. And it may be, Brent, because of a number of things that I've got running in the uh, background and so forth. But um, so and I apologize that it's taking time. But I'll have these charts here fired up for you tomorrow. And we'll try to take a look at that uh, during that uh, either the first or the uh, second segment. OK. Oh, yeah. No problem, Steve. There's no big hurry. This is all longer term stuff. And I just wanted to get your thoughts on it. Yeah. Well, I, and I'd love to give them to you. And it's nice because I'm prepared. It's just I'm dealing with a little computer issue this morning out there. But the socks, you can see that in the lower left. You can see how we did close above yesterday's uh, last year's high out there. And we're trading above the year before high. And we're trading above last year's high. The semis are just all out bullish. Hey, Brent. Um, I'll be back with you tomorrow. Thanks so much for the call. And everybody, thanks so much for the request out there as well. Have a wonderful Wednesday. I'll look forward to seeing you back here on Terrific Thursday. Take care.